Welcome to Metro Vancouver Close-Up, linking local actions with regional goals. Today we look at district energy, public recycling amenities, and carbon emission reduction plans. The City of Richmond has a goal to reduce carbon emissions by 30% by 2020, while also following regional recommendations to densify city centres. How can cities simultaneously deliver energy to a growing population while reducing emissions? They're currently replacing the Gilbert sewer pipe that goes all the way down to Lulu Island treatment plant. Um, so because they are doing that and because we are looking to establish district energy in that area, we collaborated. The result is a new City of Richmond small or district scaled energy company that's in its early days of serving the Oval Village neighborhood. 62% of energy in the community is used in buildings and that represents 43% of our carbon footprint in the community. So, you know, not surprisingly, district energy uh, comes out as a real strong strategy for reducing energy use. There's another appeal. District energy is a really great way to bring those dollars into the community rather than having them go to the bigger utilities companies. Sewage flowing through Metro Vancouver pipes contains heat energy. To capture that energy, a secondary piping system is installed alongside or around it. Through the heat exchanger, you transfer the heat from the sewer onto the portable water. The, after the, the heat uh, is uh, ele elevated to a uh, necessary temperature, the water is distributed through the distribution piping uh, and delivered into the buildings to customers. In five to ten years, we anticipate in the range of at least ten buildings with the average uh, unit count of about three to five hundred units. So, you know, about three to five thousand units will be connected uh, over that period in that area alone. For now, the system is hooked to a natural gas supply. Sewer heat technology is quite expensive, so in order to build your solid business case long term, you have to build your customer base. Richmond is becoming a regional leader in the field, as this is its second district utility. It also operates the Alexandra District Energy Utility using geothermal heat recovery. Well, residents will certainly have bragging rights for uh, being connected to renewable energy. Sorting recyclables becomes faster and easier when the information is consistent wherever you go. Work, school, home and public spaces. New Westminster is working with Metro Vancouver to test out curbside recycling bins that might become a common sight. The City of New Westminster is testing out a new design of sidewalk waste bins, which makes it easier to separate recycling from garbage. These could be what you'll eventually see installed at street level all over Metro Vancouver. Well, tends to not recycle outside their home, and the second is that there's no consistent visual form. It all started as a hands-on learning exercise for students at the Emily Carr School of Art and Design. We were designated the SkyTrain context. We tried to be consistent with all the colors, so then even if they were separated at different SkyTrain stations, someone would still know what they are. Some of the bins were whimsical in design but they were field tested too. In the end, the final design was narrowed to these. Now that there is a final design for pilot testing, what we've done is we've offered it to different stakeholders. Multi-Material BC took our bins and tested them in Richmond, North Vancouver and Penticton to see if were people putting in the right materials in our bins as compared to other bins that they were testing. That kind of testing is also taking place right now in New Westminster. In New Westminster, garbage going into the recycling has been a challenge in the past, but there are high hopes that these better designed bins will result in less contamination. That will help the municipality achieve Metro Vancouver's goal of 80% waste diversion by 2020. The bins themselves are triangular shaped, so it's easier for passers-by to uh, see from whichever direction they come from in order to throw the recycling materials into each bin. Uh, the labels on the lids are clearly marked with icons that have been developed by Metro Vancouver. They're color-coded to make it easier. Six other member municipalities of Metro Vancouver plan to test these new bins as well. 
Our hope with this project is that if we have the data that demonstrates that people recycle properly or they do a better job of recycling with our bins, that they're adopted throughout the region. And what that means is if you're in a park in, say, West Vancouver or Surrey or Port Coquitlam, if you see the same container, you don't have to puzzle out, what am I supposed to do here? You've already interacted with these bins and the likelihood of you recycling properly goes up even more. One of Metro Vancouver's goals is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To do that, programs and data are available to guide industry, business and local governments in developing their action plans. One example is underway in West Vancouver, where innovative visualization tools are helping develop a community energy plan. This plan is going to consider things like um, looking at building and housing, ideas there that can reduce greenhouse gases in the way homes are built. It's going to look at transportation. It's going to look at um, land use planning. And also it's going to look at waste and consumption. It's really timely that we're embarking upon this initiative. The last couple of years we've had substantial flooding in parts of the low areas of our community associated with king tides and onshore winds. We've had flooding in municipal buildings, flooding of streets and citizens want us to respond. The key part of the plan is the community involvement. In West Vancouver, we work very closely with the community and we formed a resident-based working group and uh, they have uh, basically uh, managed the whole uh, process, both from the, their own terms of reference and to identifying a schedule with key milestones. And they're the ones that are um, vetting the ideas, thinking about the ideas to reduce greenhouse gas consumption and ultimately it'll be the working group based on all the feedback from the public engagement that we'll do that we'll present to council the, the final C plan. Working at a local level for me is probably one of the best things because we're engaging with the community and you can see your results from what you're working on. One of the tools the working group uses comes from the Collaborative for Advanced Landscape Planning at UBC. These digital visualizations outline possible future scenarios West Vancouver residents might experience depending on the level of action taken to develop a low carbon community. What CALP does is uh, develop visualizations that show the community the impact of the policies and strategies that we will be coming up with. What we're hearing from our people is they want us to protect our assets. You know, the beauty of West Vancouver is that it's a community that starts at the beach and runs to the mountain, and they want us to look after that. Thanks to the municipalities, people, and organizations who help tell these stories. Check out the Metro Vancouver blog for more videos and articles about our great region. For Metro Vancouver Close-Up, I'm Dachmar Timmer. Music